I can tell you that most businesses are going to shut people down and not keep people on payroll just for the just for the heck of it. It's not so much uh, bailing out these big corporations or the rest of it as it is, as I see it as a bailout of the insurance companies. I would like to switch a little bit to um, 2021 and what's happening in the country right now. Um, we can talk for hours about insurances. I want to talk about uh, business and how our life changed after 2020. First question, I would like to hear your take on PPP loans. Um, Tom Brady just recently got under fire. He took, I think, $900 million from the government for his business. And a lot of people are questioning why government is giving money to people who don't need it. Like businesses who don't even apply, you know, are getting them or homeowners. Like not everybody needs a couple thousand dollars. Like if you lost your job, I understand it. But our government is, you know, spending trillions of dollars now. Will it really help? And what's your take on PPP? Is it ethical to take government loan these days just because you can? And what's your take on national debt? that because it's also going to increase dramatically after all of this yeah there's a lot of questions there yeah. you know there's a, there's a lot of different parts to that question um uh first to tom brady you know is it ethical for tom brady to take a 900 million dollar loan or grant from the government um uh i haven't an, had an analogous situation i have a client that has uh, uh that has 600 locations um uh, of property locations across the country. They're a, they're a public company, a multi-billion dollar company, and they applied for a PPP loan and they got it. And it was in the press. Um, and people said the same thing with Tom Brady is to say, oh my goodness, they're taking this. They're taking this loan uh, from the government. Is that fair for a Tom Brady to be able to do it or a multi-billion dollar company when a small corporation is doing it? Um, I think to understand that question, of course, the devil's always in the details. You got to understand exactly what the PPP loan is. To just say they're taking a government loan, they don't need it, that's one thing. Um, the way PPP, and I've got a lot of criticism of PPP, but the way that it is operating is that it is a loan that has to be used, okay, for mainly payroll. Um, and so the, the, the consequences of not filing for the PPP loan is that you shut the store down and you don't pay the employees, okay? And so you don't shut the employee, you don't take the PPP loan, you just shut the business, you just close it, or you just fire the people or you lay them off. So what is happening in a lot of instances, and this was with my client, is that they're taking it to keep the people on the payroll. A lot of it is payroll of, of what the PPP has to be used for. It doesn't go into your pocket, it's not profit, it's the expenses associated with keeping the doors open and keeping those employees in place. That's the way it's supposed to work. And in a large sense, if you don't take it and you turn it down or you give it back, which was in the case of my client giving it back, um, the consequences can hurt the employees. So I don't know how I would like to see, to sort of say, did Tom Brady do the right thing or not, if it was going to his employees that it would otherwise be that he would be furloughing. I don't then, think you would, but that's know. the question, because if you can but afford it, it you know, you, you uh, should be paying from your money, not government money. Look, you can say that if you can afford it and the rest of it and people are in business and what is generally going to happen, let's be real. Sure. Um, if Tom Brady has all of these employees and there's no business and he will furlough them or shut them down, that's what a business will do. He probably has, if he's got that much of a loan, he's got shareholders, he may not be you know, it may not be owning the company or the rest of it. I don't know the details of it, but I can tell you that most businesses are going to shut people down and not keep people on payroll just for the just for the heck of it. They're going to shut people down. And people are getting laid off. Um, so I think the devil's in the details and it depends. It's not so simple. You know, we get into this too much in our country with social media and whatnot to make things too simple. Things sometimes are it's the details that matter. So I would want to know. Um, the biggest problem I have with PPP, though, is it's not so much uh, bailing out these big corporations or the rest of it as it is, as I see it, as a bailout of the insurance companies. Um, the PPP loans, most businesses that are getting PPP loans, if you look at them, or the large PPP loans, have business interruption coverage associated with their property policy. 
If they own the property, they generally have a business interruption associated, which pays for the payroll. The insurance companies have denied business interruption on all of those policies you, and are fighting you've been, them. you've been successful fighting them, right? Well, recently. we've been fighting them. You know, it is, it is a big fight and it's going to continue. You know, I've been helping to, you know, uh, lead that litigation nationally, but uh, it's going to be, they're fighting us tooth and nail and it's going to go all the way up to the state Supreme Courts on this. Um, and, and so this is a, you know, this is a very, very big fight with the insurance companies. Um, there's no doubt that a lot of these policies 100% apply. Uh, they admitted in, after the SARS incident in 2003, they admitted to every state insurance commissioner that if we don't have a very specific exclusion in here with viruses, there's coverage. Well, they're denying them no matter what the policies say. And instead, they're going with companies and they're going with industry to the government and they're saying, let the taxpayers pay this amount. The insurance companies are actually driving the PPP loans. They're, they're lobbying for the PPP loans so that the insurance companies don't have to pay. So what ends up happening is the taxpayers. And unfortunately, in every cat storm I've been involved with, and I've been involved with just about everyone in the last 20 years, the same thing happens over and over again. In Louisiana, it was called the Road Home, and in other places, you had these programs that the insurance companies go in. Most people are insured for casualty, for a disasters. Most people have insurance because they've got a mortgage on their property or their business or whatnot. And the insurance companies don't pay. The insurance companies hold a deck. And in every disaster, and COVID is no different, every disaster, they don't pay. The insurance companies don't pay. And people are suffering. The senators and the congressmen go to the federal fisc and they pass a law and they take it from the taxpayers and they bail out the insurance companies. What's really happening is that what angers me is that in every storm, in every casualty event, you take it, the insurance companies have been insuring that casualty loss and it has become an industry where insurance denies the cash stuff, casualty stuff on a mass scale and then forces people to take it from the taxpayers. And then people, once they've got the money, they no longer pursue the insurance claim. The insurance companies benefit from it. Absolutely. Well, it's crazy to me because government, if you think about it, make us buy insurance. It's a law. You cannot not have house insurance, car insurance. So they make us to buy it. It's essentially, it's uh, we've been getting taxed twice. So uh, insurance is a tax on me, on on population. Like you have to, uh, you know, set aside money to to insuring your property, sure. insuring your business. I mean, every business has so many insurances. And then when something happens, you know, we, we're getting taxed again. You're exactly right. Dimitri, I mean, it's interesting you put it that way, that insurance is a tax, uh, that it's actually set aside. And, and you're right. It is a tax. I've never thought of it that way. Interesting that you put it that way. But it's, it is a tax because you're right. You're setting aside something to put it in a pot that if it's necessary, it pays. And this is with government. And, but what's happening is you're exactly right, is in these storms, they're now... But guess who's get bail getting bailed out? They're getting bailed out the insurance companies. Everybody gets upset at these federal programs <clears throat> because the federal programs are put together. They never work properly. PP is not, PPP is not working properly or fair. Why? Because it's being set up very quickly and it's being set up with parameters that aren't correct and people are getting lopsided payments out of the program. And so people's focus in the disasters is on how PPP is not working or the disaster funds not working. I mean, the Tom Brady controversy is a perfect thing. Everybody are upset that this company is getting it and I'm not getting it. It's a red herring. It's a red herring, though, because the insurance companies are laughing all the way to the bank because now they're going, they're mad at the program, not at us for not paying. They're mad at how the program's paying, not us. The program is, in many cases, it's paying for the insurance that you've already paid for. So you're right, you're getting taxed first. You're in the sense of you're paying your insurance premiums and you're also paying your taxes. And unfortunately, the, you're not getting the benefit of the bargain on the insurance. And the government, the government's biggest fault in all of this is that the government isn't going to the insurance companies and saying, wait a second, we shouldn't pay for this disaster. You already collected money from this. Isn't it regulated? Can, can government make insurance companies accountable? 
Yeah, so insurance companies are regulated, but they're not regulated by the federal government. They're regulated by state governments. Mm. So every state has an insurance commissioner. And those insurance commissioners are generally a revolving door in many cases uh, of the industry. So you have insurance company executives that become insurance commissioners and then go back becoming executives and they're regulating themselves in most state cases. Um, and the insurance companies spend all of their time lobbying one executive that regulates them per state. That's what they're doing. And we are not spending time, property owners, policyholder advocates, uh, contractors are not going to the insurance commissioner and saying, what are you doing? Or they're not often. Now, the APA is doing that. I've been doing that, has been speaking to my insurance company. I mean, I am on a first name basis with my insurance commissioner, uh, Jim Donnellan. We brought him to, you know, when, when the storm, we brought them to some of these conventions um, because we want to have a dialogue to tell that insurance commissioner what's happening because the insurance commissioner can regulate. But people don't know that. They don't know that the person they should be complaining to is the insurance commissioner or the attorney general that, that has some influence on this process as well, a legal influence on this. Um, our government can do that. Instead, we're spending time with the legislative branch of the government, which quite frankly is difficult, the legislative branch, to get a law passed. Um, it takes a lot of money. It's very, you know, with the executive branch, it's a few people you can speak to. And many of those people are responsive, more responsive to their constituents and their, and their things. So there has to be more of a focus um, by people on this um, and then more of a dialogue. You know, roofers, you know, an individual contractor may think, well, what can I do? That's a giant insurance company. What can I do? You've got to explain to the local politicians that we represent property owners. And this is what's happening, and have a dialogue, you know, or be involved in organizations like the APA that's having that kind of dialogue with, uh, with, with those executive branch. Absolutely enjoy this interview, guys. If you like um, John's content, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, comment below something nice to John. If maybe you have a question, we'll be answering, monitoring comments later. Thank you so much for staying all the way to the end. Great, thanks, Thanks sir. Thanks.